Hello and welcome back to Vox Terra. Today, let's continue to explore the question of what are the economic interests that are driving the heating of our planet and these endless wars or what economic interests are benefiting and therefore at the least influencing public opinion that we can stand back and watch now what 13,000 dead in Gaza and help pay for it. Well, shedding some light on that profoundest of questions was an earnings call I heard first reported on Democracy Now! and then I confirmed it at Business Insider. I believe it was on October 24th from Raytheon. And an earnings call is basically where there's a meeting of the company, the public, investors to discuss the business's outlook. So at that October 24th of 2023 earnings call, a Morgan Stanley analyst asked a question something like, how are these wars in Ukraine and Israel and Gaza, as well as the Biden administration's request for defense spending going to affect the company's portfolio? Doesn't it look like it will benefit? Well, to that, Greg Hayes of Raytheon, CEO of Raytheon, which is now apparently called RTX Corporation, responded something like, yeah, it's going to benefit Raytheon. And I, I, well, another reason I wanted to single out Raytheon today is because in my prior video where I talked about climate scientist Alan Robach, nuclear winter researcher, he himself cited the influence of Raytheon and Boeing in our government as a driving factor for our massive nuclear arsenal. So here's Greg Hayes' reply to that comment, to that question. Next tranche, uh, the president's hundred plus billion dollar uh, request, which is more than forty billion dollars for Ukraine. Uh, what you're going to see is the same things that we have been seeing, but in much higher quantities. I think really across the entire Raytheon portfolio, you're going to see a benefit uh, of this restocking on top of what we think is going to be an increase in the DoD top line. Now, Business Insider quoted Greg Hayes as saying on CNBC that they're seeing very strong demand for RTX products from Israel, the U.S., and other partner countries around the world. And I point out this concept of other partner countries buying from these defense manufacturers headquartered in the U.S. of A., because that's a point I made in my earlier videos about the expansion of NATO and how the press is kind of also ignoring largely those financial interests driving that expansion. Well, he went on to say, the war in Gaza or in Israel, again, a tragic situation. It will eventually lead to additional orders. And their focus is on having Israel have what it needs to defend itself. And I point out that's their focus because that language, that way of putting it, is really similar to what Kamala Harris said or the Biden administration has been saying in that we're not going to put conditions on the defense we're supplying, the defense monies we're supplying and weaponry we're supplying to Israel. We're not going to put conditions on what they're doing in Gaza or the West Bank for that matter. This is Vice President Kamala Harris speaking from London Thursday after talks with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. We are not going to create any conditions on the support that we are giving Israel to defend itself. And this idea that industry, private for-profit industry, and our public sector government, our elected officials, are making the same or similar talking points, well, that gets us to the heart of what President Eisenhower warned about, that industrial military complex, meaning that revolving door. And it also gets to what I write in my studies of media and politics, and it might have been Michael Parenti, about this idea of different about the way consensus is built by echoing people echoing the same talking points but it's coming from different sources we hear from private industry we hear from the the government we hear then from pundits that's what i saw get us into the iraq invasion earlier i shared with you another neat example of that industrial military complex lloyd austin defense secretary lloyd austin himself worked for Raytheon, that citing Mother Jones. And look at this financial incentive for conflict and war. I cited to you also before the average CEO pay at these defense contractors is $20 million. 
That's from the Center for International Policy. And I'd imagine there's a similar nice juicy CEO compensation within the fossil fuel petrochemical sector. But let's even go beyond just that juicy CEO compensation. There's also the millions of dollars coming from defense contractors to our elected officials, millions of dollars from fossil fuel petrochemicals going to our elected officials, largely ignored by our press. But let's go beyond that and think about a system-wide structure here in the U.S. of A and many nations around the world for that reason. The value of Raytheon stock, not just to its average employees, not just to its CEOs who are all going to want to believe in what they're doing, not just to the politicians that they are supporting, wanting to believe in the mission, but also what about just stockholders, shareholders within mutual funds, pension funds, and all these people, all these Americans scared about what they're going to do when they're old, knowing that part of their fortune is tied to these defense contractors, tied to these fossil fuel petrochemical manufacturers. And here we'd like to pause and question the nature of what I call what's being called anti ESG or anti quote woke investing. Is that really the beating heart of it? Defending those dominant industries. And bringing it back to our media, it's really curious that our media seems to ignore all these money ties. To that end, I shared with you previously an intercept article about how what they called cable news networks, when they had on foreign policy experts generally hawkish advocating we gotta bomb them or boycott them or a omit their defense industry ties and how much attention as i pointed out to you before do voices for peace get in our media how much attention do voices for a greener economy get in our media there was a protest against raytheon called a die-in in Arizona, more than 100 Jewish and Palestinian solidarity activists held a die-in protest, blocking the main entrance to Raytheon's office in Tucson for over an hour Wednesday. And how much attention did that get in our media? And how much is attention is it getting? There are many Jewish voices and many Israelis who do not like this bombardment of Gaza. These are underemphasized. And this goes all throughout our history with almost every conflict. But now let's just bring in that fossil fuel petrochemical aspect of the conflicts. Well, it's not always that obvious, but sometimes we get glimmers of it. For example, in Syria, we've got troops in Syria, barely acknowledged by our media. And during the Trump administration, I came across an article in military times where Trump was authorizing an expanded use of our force to, quote, secure the oil fields. Think back to the Iraq invasion. Dick Cheney, many of these neocons had ties to the oil and gas industry, as did the Bush family themselves. And then this conflict with Russia, which Russia's claim why they invaded was over the continued expansion of new Ukraine or continued expansion of NATO. Well, this too has been used as a massive excuse to dig and drill and create more of a fossil fuel infrastructure at a time when we should be scaling back. So now let's just think about it, right? The NATO expansion, hey, you're buying weapons from these industries headquartered within the U.S. And does that really do Americans any good? And then now cap it off with, hey, you're not going to buy oil and gas from countries we're saying are the bad guys. You're going to buy it from countries within this alliance. So you're looking now at this, how the, is our military being really taken advantage of for business purposes? And when you combine business with violence what is that called and as an aside almost i just want to put there as food for thought we could say are there other purposes these dominant industries could go towards couldn't raytheon be working more towards space or space settlement or nasa yes they have an interest in that but now let's think about back to the george w bush administration again when he launched off his war to invade Iraq, much of the public supported it, went along with it due to that constant media narrative. When he had proposed sending a manned mission to Mars, much of the public mocked that, made a big joke about it. So where are these companies supposed to be making their money? They're going to focus on these destructive techniques because for whatever reason, these are applauded. And whether you or your friends are convinced about these economic interests, and that's a good reason why we shouldn't be rah, 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 let's just keep arming these countries and having these one-sided narratives. Maybe you really buy into this us versus them mindset. 
consider the words of Israeli peace activist, human rights watch worker, really ignored by our media, Sari Bashi, that I featured in an earlier video as well, saying, hey guys, no matter what you're hearing from who, it's wrong to kill civilians. And for Americans who are confused by all of what's going on, I would suggest you just remember that very basic principle that civilians need to be protected and then encourage your elected representatives to remind the, Ameri the U.S. government of that principle. Because the United States government is providing $3.8 billion in annual military aid to Israel, and it's rushing even more weapons here right now. Well, Padna, I hope you found this video good food for thought, interesting, enlightening, maybe something you could use or share with others. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. You click that notification bell so you know when I'm putting up a new video. You're liking, you're commenting, you're giving feedback. Positive is appreciated, but constructive criticism as well. How's this, for example, how's this beard working for you? How's the tone and tenor working for you? Just what do you think of the format? Anything really is welcome. And I am so appreciative of the couple of people who have donated to Patreon. Thank you, Bella Grissi, Bella Grissi and Environmental Coffee House. If others could join in, that'd be terrific, as this show takes a heck of a lot of time to put together for you and comes at a big opportunity cost. And hey, as always, until next time, peace be with you.